Welcome. I'm Pastor Jim Peters, and I welcome you to worship on Sunday, August the 9th at Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Topeka, Kansas, for the 10th Sunday after Pentecost. And uh, if you haven't been in church in a while, you might notice here in front of the altar and also in front of the pulpit uh, that we have new pyramids. Uh, Melanie Maxwell made these for us. And actually there is a, an additional one out in the church concourse uh, on the table where we usually put the bread and the wine. So I wanna say a special thank you to Melanie for making these. Uh, as I, I hope you can tell, they are very beautiful. And uh, they've been introduced to our church uh, at the request of our worship committee. Uh, and the logic behind this is, well, we have a lot of green Sundays in the church here. And it's kind of nice to have something a little bit different uh, to celebrate on, the, on some of the Sundays. Uh, there's also a red set, so uh, you will eventually see that as well. But uh, towards the end of today's worship service, uh, we're going to have a dedication and blessing prayer for these parents. Uh, but today, for the, at this worship, we gather to praise and worship God and uh, to share our faith that God can make even the worst of circumstances turn out into something good. Let's begin our worship today with our gathering song. If you're using a hymnal, it is number 519. Open your ears, O faithful people.
O God, our defender, storms rage around and within us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair. Deliver your sons and daughters from fear and preserve us in the faith of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Right now, it's time for today's children's message, so good morning, girls and boys. Our gospel story for today is about a time when Jesus' disciples were out on a boat on a stormy sea. This happened at nighttime, and at a certain point, they looked up, and they saw Jesus walking on the water toward them. That must have really surprised them, don't you think? But then Peter said to Jesus, If it's really you, tell me to come out on the water with you. And so Jesus did. What do you think happened next? Well, Peter got out of the boat, and he walked on the water too, just like Jesus. But then he got scared, and he started to sink, so Jesus had to save him. Well, today, I thought we might try to act out this gospel story. So, up here with me, I have a bucket of water. And uh, obviously, this bucket is too small for anybody to actually walk on the water that's in it. But I wonder if somebody could stand on the water that's in it. So let me uh, ask for a volunteer from our congregation today. Thank you, Donna. Uh, so Donna, would you, right now, would you please just stand on the water in this bucket? No. Well, why not? Well, my shoes will get wet. I might sink. Okay, so yeah, if she tried to stand on the water in this bucket, she would sink down into the water and her feet and her shoes would get all wet. So, if this story isn't telling us that we should try to walk on water ourselves, what do you think it is telling us? Well, I think it's telling us how important it is for us to trust in Jesus. Sometimes we all have to do things that are hard, but if we know that Jesus is with us, and if we put our trust in him, I know that we'll find things that aren't as hard as we thought they were going to be. So remember to trust in Jesus, okay? Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for this beautiful day and for the many ways that you bless us and take care of us. Help us to remember that you are always with us to support us and help us, especially in the times of our lives when things can be a little tough for us. Always be with us and help us. We ask for all of these things in the name of your Son, Jesus our Lord, Amen. Our first reading today is a reading from Genesis. Jacob settled in the land where his father had lived as an alien, the land of Canaan. This is the story of the family of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was shepherding the flock with his brothers. He was a helper to the sons of Bilhah and Zilpah, his father's wives, and Joseph brought a bad report of them to their father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any other of his children, because he was the son of his old age, and he had made him a long robe with sleeves. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Now his brothers went to pasture their father's flock near Shechem, and Israel said to Joseph, Are not your brothers pasturing the flock at Shechem? 
Come, I will send you to them. He answered, Here I am. So he said to him, Go now, see if it is well with your brothers and with the flock, and bring word back to me. So he sent him from the valley of Hebron. He came to Shechem, and a man found him wandering in the fields. The man asked him, What are you seeking? I am seeking my brothers, he said. Tell me, please, where they are pasturing the flock. The man said, They have gone away, for I heard them say, Let us go to Jonath. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Jonath. They saw him from a distance, and before he came near to them, they conspired to kill him. They said to one another, Here comes this dreamer. Come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. Then we shall say that a wild animal has devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. But when Reuben heard it, he delivered him out of their hands, saying, Let us not take his life. Reuben said to them, Shed no blood, throw him into this pit here in the wilderness, but lay no hand on him, that he might rescue him out of their hand and restore him to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the long robe with sleeves that he wore, and they took him and threw him into a pit. The pit was empty, there was no water in it. Then they sat down to eat, and looking up, they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead, with their camels carrying bone, gum, balm, and resin, on their way to carry it down to Egypt. Then Joseph said to his brothers, what profit is it if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him, for he is our brother, our own flesh. And his brothers agreed. When some Midianite traders passed by, they drew Joseph up, lifting him out of the pit, and sold him to the Ishmaelites for twenty pieces of silver. And they took Joseph to Egypt. Word of God, word of life. Thanks to God. The psalm will be done responsibly with the women reading the odd verses and the men reading the even. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon God's name. Make known the deeds of the Lord among the peoples. Sing to the Lord, sing praises, and speak of all God's marvelous works. Glory in God's holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the strength of the Lord. Continually seek God's face. Remember the marvels God has done, the wonders and the judgments of God's mouth. O offspring of Abraham, God's servant, O children of Jacob, God's chosen ones. Then God called for a famine in the land and destroyed the supply of bread. The Lord sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They bruised his feet in fetters, his neck they put in an iron collar. Until his prediction came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. The king sent and released him. The rulers of people set him free. Setting him as a master over his household, as a ruler over all his possessions. To instruct his princes according to his will, and to teach his elders wisdom. Hallelujah. The second reading is a reading from Romans. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, Do not say in your heart, Who will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down? Or who will ascend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead? But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified, 
and one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Word of God, word of love. Thanks be to God.
Would you prevent Abraham Lincoln from being assassinated? How about stopping Hitler before he came to power? Or stopping the establishment of slavery in the British colonies? We can all probably think of at least one point where everything started to go wrong, where everyone would have been better off if something hadn't happened, or if something else had. We can even play that game with our first reading today from the book of Genesis. But before we get into this, let me put in a brief plug. The story of Joseph from the book of Genesis is a classic story from the Bible. It's the kind of story that has everything, and it really draws you in. And we're lucky this summer because we're going to get to share a little of it. But we won't get to hear the whole thing. So, if you've never read it, or if it's been a long time since you've read it, let me encourage you to read the whole thing. It runs throughout Genesis chapter 37 through Genesis chapter 48. You won't regret it. Anyway, uh, back to the reading that we shared today. Where could things have gone better? Well, right from the start, we're told that Joseph was a child of Jacob's old age and that Jacob loved him better than all of the other brothers. Jacob even makes Joseph a long robe with sleeves to wear or a coat of many colors, depending on the translation that you're using. We're also told that Jacob has been sending Joseph to be a helper to his brothers out in the field, and that on at least one occasion, he brought back a bad report, throwing some of his brothers under the bus. All of these things, plus a couple of other things that didn't make the cut for today's reading, have ended up causing Joseph's brothers to absolutely hate him. And can you blame them? So right away, we might want to say to Jacob before all of this starts to happen, don't play favorites with Joseph. It's only going to lead to trouble. And to Joseph, we might want to say, Stop being such a tattletale. And stop being such a know-it-all. You'll regret it. Then we hear that the time comes when the brothers finally get their chance, when Joseph has been sent to check on them again. As soon as they see him coming from a distance, they immediately start planning on how they're going to kill him. Now here's a situation where we might want to intervene with the brothers. You might want to rethink that killing stuff. At least Reuben ends up having some compassion, but it doesn't go very far before Judah makes the suggestion that instead of killing Joseph, they ought to sell him into slavery, which might be another good place for an intervention. Glad you didn't kill him, but slavery? Really? Today's reading ends with Joseph being sold and brought to Egypt. But of course, the story goes on from there, and there's a definite pattern that develops. Just when you're sure that 
Joseph has reached his lowest point that he can't get any lower. Something happens and raises him up again. And then, of course, something else happens and brings him down. But then he's lifted up once again. God's love keeps turning things around for him. And Joseph himself will come to realize this. That even though his brothers and others along the way may have intended to do him harm, God was always working for something good. That message has repercussions far beyond the limits of this story. Because God is never going to stop. God is always going to keep on working for what is right and for what is good. Sometimes you and I are going to be able to cooperate with God's work. And sometimes we're going to get in the way of it. We are all capable of doing some pretty horrible things, but nothing is going to stop God from getting what God and even though we can probably think of plenty of situations where there would be benefits if only we could go back and make things turn out differently, we can't deny that God is able to bring something good out of our bad. It happened with Joseph and his brothers. It happened with Jesus on the cross. It happened with Paul, who went from being a persecutor of Christians to becoming an apostle. There is truly no end to God's ability and desire to keep on working for something good. Of course, we can't really travel back in time and change things and then hope that everything turns out for the better. But we can trust in God to be with us and to transform our future. Amen.
words of the Apostles Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the Church, the world, and all who are in need. For your whole Church throughout the world, give courage in the midst of storms, so that we see and hear Jesus calling, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. May we follow Christ wherever he leads. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the well-being of your creation, protect waterways, forests, lands, and wildlife from exploitation and abuse. Help the human family endeavor to sustain and be sustained by the resources of your hand. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who struggle to make ends meet, especially here in our own community. We pray for help for all and for Jesus' comforting presence in our midst. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those whose work puts them at risk for contracting the virus, protect them and keep them safe in these uncertain times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the nations and their leaders, in you steadfast love and faithfulness meet, and righteousness and peace kiss. May nations in conflict know the peace that is the fruit of justice, and the justice that is the path to peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who need, everyone who calls upon your name saved. Accompany all who are lonely. Hear the voices of those who cry out in anguish. And support those who are frustrated in their search for an affordable place to live. We pray for those suffering this day, especially those we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Betsy, Dave, Pam, and Sharon. Lord, in your mercy, for our congregation. You have gathered us here today as your people, and we thank you for this gift. We pray for those who are new to this community, for students and teachers preparing for a new school year, and for those struggling with unexpected hardship. Supply us generously with your grace for our life together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, O God, for the saints of the whole church from all times and places, and for the saints in our lives and in our community whom you have gathered to yourself. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In a certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. As usual, I want to thank you once again for your support of our congregation. Even in these times when we aren't able to fully meet together, 
I appreciate so much your offerings to our church. And remember, you can make an offering to our church online through our church's website, uh, by mailing your offering into the church, or by dropping it off at the church office during regular business hours. And again, thank you so much. service and with the 
music. Uh, I appreciate your presence so much and all that you, you're doing for our church in this time. And as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, I do want to offer a prayer of blessing and dedication on our beautiful new parents. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Sisters and brothers in Christ, today we give thanks to God and we seek God's blessing as we set apart these new parents to the glory of God. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, creator of the universe, for you have, for you have enriched our lives with every good and perfect gift. You have commanded us to show your splendor to our children, and you have invited us to praise you with lives of love, justice, and joy. Send your blessing on these parents, which we set apart today. May they adorn this house, show us the beauty of holiness, and so proclaim the glory of your majesty. To you, O oh God, be all glory and honor through your Son, Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> God Almighty, God most merciful, bless us, keep us, and grant us peace. Amen. Amen. Please join in our singing hymn, and uh, again, if you're using a hymnal, it is 763, My Life Flows On in Endless Song.
is with you. Thanks be to God.